seconds. Deep breath. Did you want me to open the meeting? Because we have the aboriginal. It's not a meeting. No. It's not a meeting. It's not a meeting. I mean the presentation. Uh, yes, if, uh, if I'm just yeah. going yeah. to say welcome and then I'll. Yeah. Okay. Uh, well, great to see some people in the gallery today. It's been a, a long journey to get people back to come and see our, our public budget presentation. Here we are tonight. It's the annual uh, budget presentation, and it is a requirement. Uh, of the community charter to make sure that we give an opportunity to get the word out and it's just a great thing to do to Mad talk about the awesome things that are happening One here night. at the city and, and the plans are for 2022 and onwards. Uh, first, before I get into anything, I want to ask that our, our worship, Mayor Dooley, come forward and, uh, and say a couple words to open us up. Okay, thanks, Colin. Just make sure the mic is on. Oh, Sarah. Can you hear the? Uh, no, I didn't. Lock. Okay, I got. Is that better? All right. <coughs> Good. Welcome everybody, and thank you for coming out tonight. And I'd like to uh, start with a Aboriginal acknowledgement. <coughs> and we would like to acknowledge the land to which we are gathered. It is the traditional territory of the Tanaha the Selix and Senex peoples, and is home to Métis and many diverse Aboriginal persons. We honour their connection to the land and rivers, and we respect the importance of the environment to our strength as a community. And with that, I'd like to thank you for being here. And uh, tonight you're going to hear from our city manager and from Colin McClure, our chief financial officer. And uh, with that, I'd like to welcome Chris Drury as well, who's been... Uh, working in our finance department for quite some time and has his hands all over this financial report you're going to have tonight, Chris. Thanks for your good work. Really appreciate it. And I would also like to send a, a shout out to our council who spent many hours in this room here with our various departments with presentations throughout the last several months. And it, it, come, it ended up with, the, with this document here. And it wasn't an easy process because, as you all know, um, we're just coming slowly coming out of a COVID pandemic that really set us back on our heels a little bit. But thanks to the good work of our direction from council and the good work of our staff, we were able to weather that storm fairly well, as you'll see from the budget presentation tonight. So with that, I'd like to welcome Colin McClure to come up and continue with the presentation. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor Dooley. And uh, again, just also thinking that we're streaming this live, so I you know, want to put a shout out to those of you that are spending your evening tonight watching us on YouTube. Um, and at that, I would actually, I'd like, like to ask uh, our city manager, Kevin Cormack, to open us up here just to speak about uh, strategic priorities um, that uh, we will be following here just as I get the slides going. Uh, before I do that, just a quick introduction. Uh, we've done that with Mayor Dooley. Um, we'll go through a couple of facts and other d documents. We're going to talk about our financial plan process, the, uh, talk about the budget overview for 2022. Of course, what most of you want to hear about, what's the taxation? So we'll talk about the taxation and operating budget. Uh, of course, we'll talk about our assets and reserves, and then we'll have a uh, time at the end for any comments or questions. Uh, but I will pass this over here uh, to the strategic plan for uh, our CEO, Kevin Cormack. Thanks, Colin. And, and um, uh, again, thanks for you uh, folks being here and, and those out there. So I just want to uh, you know, start by just sharing our vision. So Nelson's vision is we are a prosperous and resilient community with robust ecosystems and safe, welcoming neighborhoods where we celebrate diversity, history, and our culture. And I think uh, that, pan that pandemic uh, certainly challenged us in this way, uh, how diverse or how um, resilient are we. And i you know, like to thank Council and all our staff and all our community for being resilient through this, um, through this pandemic. I, I think Nelson has probably 
done as well as any other, um, you know, as most communities out there. And, and I think we're, well, we seem to be having the sixth wave again. So um, once uh, hopefully we get through this and you know, we can see those uh, tourists and visitors return to our community safely. As Colin uh, stated, um, we have really four overarching goals. Uh, the first one is enhance sustainability of city services and infrastructure. So that's the core work we do. And again, you'll see throughout Colin's presentation, um, you know, where council invests in that and has invested over a number of years and we're really starting to see that pay off. You know, the water main replacements we were uh, continuing to do, uh, we've just, council just approved um, a large grant opportunity to uh, significantly up, up uh, or re um, make more resilient our, our whole storm system as we anticipate more and more uh, flash flood events, etc. Um, the work we did on, you know, led by Colin uh, on our water leaks and our, our system at the you know, at the homeowner side of our, our system. So we really worked hard. We hired a, a fantastic consultant who walks around with a backpack on his back with parts to repair your toilet. If, you know, it's Colin, maybe I'll give you that stat later of, of how much water a, a leaking toilet uses in a year. And we've had some really good successes working with our businesses to really reduce uh, you know that water usage uh, facility upgrades we continue to upgrade our facilities I think most of you have uh, seen the work that Nelson Hydro has done throughout the system uh, transit there's some you know, certainly some transit improvements coming up as well our second um, piece which is in our vision is strengthening our neighborhoods and I think everyone here recognizes the un unprecedented growth and the pressure on housing and and on the uh, commercial side as well. There's just, we are certainly being discovered and that pressure is all across our community to, you know, to do that. But we've seen, you know, three um, affordable housing projects delivered. We're still working with BC Housing on another one. Uh, they recently announced the purchase of the North Shore Inn for, uh, those most vulnerable. Um, so that's on the, you know, we have one of the most progressive um, uh, zoning policies out there on that residential side. Uh, we allow laneway, laneway housing, uh, you know, secondary suites in every home. You can basically have three residential dwellings on almost any city lot. Uh, and then, you know, how do we make those, those, uh, neighborhoods livable. Uh, we've done a number of parks improvements, um, largely due to, you know, our volunteers, the Rotary Club up at um, Art Gibbons Park and Rosemont Park. Uh, if you haven't been up there lately, I would encourage you to go up there. The, the tran transformation of that park has been nothing but spectacular and they're doing more work, uh, including uh, they're going to have a, uh, a storyboard uh, for a literacy park or literacy project that they've partnered with Seaball on, so you'll be able to uh, go read different stories up there on an ongoing basis. Uh, Cottonwood Park, again, another park that uh, has gone undergone amazing transformation. We've done a, a full uh, parks plan for that. We uh, were able to secure a million dollar grant, um, almost a million dollar grant through the province um, as part of our recovery and you'll see improvements to signage, improvements to that park is all part of that. Uh, the Hall Street Pier, uh, we hope to um, be able to get that off the ground this um, spring or summer. Uh, again, we uh, received over 1.5 million in grants to uh, support that project. Uh, the new Third, third Street um, uh, Bike lane project, again, we received some significant grants to make that happen. Uh, we just received a grant, it's the Time and Memorial Grant, and that will allow us to build a um, arbor, uh, indigenous arbor up at the 10th Street campus in partnership with Selkirk College. So uh, uh, an amenity and a recognition of and how we move forward on truth and reconciliation. So I think we're, um, we're rising up to the challenge of, you know, how do we keep this a, a livable and in an attractive community? And that doesn't even mention things like the mural fest and the sculpture walk that we have ongoing. And thanks again to the, you know, those, those volunteers and, and those groups that make that happen. Um, 
The next um, strategic uh, overarching goal is expand local jobs and local prosperity. Uh, obviously the COVID, um, the pandemic uh, was a significant impact on our business community. Uh, we've worked closely through the Economic Development Partnership, uh, through CAST, to uh, support our businesses. Uh, Council once again waived all patio fees this year. And as, a, as part of that, um, you know, the um, farmer's market is coming back to Baker Street. Uh, we are just, we'll be bringing a report to Council to uh, allow all our businesses to participate as, as part of that with waiving fees for them to, for on, on Wednesdays for them to be part of that. Uh, across our downtown, um, the Nelson Innovation Center, again, Council supported that in this financial plan and, and that's expanded to allow us to create this um, climate innovation hub as, as part of that um, project. Uh, as I said, you know, we've really focused on bringing new money into, into the city through grants, et cetera, and, and we've brought in millions of dollars of new, new grants. And we've really looked at how do we focus our spending as a city on local businesses. And finally, uh, it's the last overarching goal is achieve excellent in city governance. And you know, I would say, you know, just managing through this pandemic um, was a significant um, challenge for all organizations and, and the city in particular. You know, we've managed through heat domes, we've managed through wildfires, we've managed through unprecedented snow loads, um, and our staff have really stepped up and, and met all those challenges, wind storms, um, so, um, and you know, managing through supply chain issues, et cetera. So we've, uh, I think, done an excellent job in that. You know, certainly our corporate services department is, and the um, development services um, department are, are, have brought a number of of bylaw updates, et cetera, to modernize the work we do. And in this budget, you'll see a, another, through the recovery money we have is an investment in our core systems to ensure that we can manage um, better going forward. You know, certainly there's some, some things that have come out of the pandemic. How do we uh, do business, you know, you know um, through using uh, technology and, and we're gonna take advantage of that. So that's just a few highlights of, of moving forward on, on some of our uh, strategic goals. And I'll turn it back to Colin. Thank you. <clears throat> Thanks, Kevin. There's, there's always a lot going on, and, and sometimes we don't get there until we talk to it in the meeting. And yes, we have a question. Could you turn the volume up a little bit? It's kind of here. It's just barely. OK. Uh, well, I can see who will ask over here. Volume? I think there's helpful if you moved up to the two seats is not going to make the clearance. But yeah, there's, there's like there's two, yeah. there's two there's two speakers above your head right in front of Councillor Renwick there. If you come up on these two front seats there. There's two at the back. Can you say something? Yep. Just give us a moment. Uh, we're having some volume questions. Give it a try. Come on up front here. Yeah, I'm talking. Oh, okay. No? Probably it's backing up from the mic. Yeah, I think you were. Yeah. Are we good? Do we be better now? Or? Just need to bring it to your... Feel free to bring it to your... Hold on. Yeah, yeah. Is that better? Yes. Okay. All right. There you go. Okay. Thank you. Thanks for putting your hand up. We don't want people not understanding what's happening here today. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay, um, CEO Cormac talked a bit about this at the beginning. Uh, one thing that uh, really was uh, beneficial to the city and not just the city of Nelson, but municipalities, villages, towns uh, throughout the province is that uh, we were provided with some COVID restart uh, funding. Uh, at the end of 2020 as part of the pandemic. And a big part of that is a list of, you know, we got, city got $2.6 million, which is a significant amount of money. 
And uh, for us, those monies were to deal with revenue shortfalls. Uh, city is very entrepreneurial, so our campground uh, wasn't as successful. Parking meters, that was a real challenge for us. There's another uh, number of areas we also got hit pretty hard. So we were able to use about $750,000 of that COVID restart money in 2020 to be able to offset those costs. Uh, so that was significant. The other big component in 2020 is that we had additional costs, about $650,000 uh, just for emergency planning, response costs uh, to be able to uh, put um, you know, sanitation sort of stations and and uh, and 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 sanit toilets and whatnot for the vulnerable in our community that didn't have a place, and just other pandemic related costs. Again, I think it was pretty common now that we see the plexiglass that are up in all kinds of different locations because uh, we do serve the public on a regular basis. <clears throat> in uh, 2021, uh, uh, what we saw again was some revenue shortfalls, even though the community did come back. Uh, Nelson was a bit of a hot spot for COVID at the end of August. Uh, we really did see that uh, COVID uh, wildfires were also not really that helpful, but that was an area in particular that we were one of the highest uh, per capita for COVID cases in the end of the summer of 2021. And we saw campground revenues drop. Uh, certainly one of the other components is our uh, police department and us being a, having a, the ability to support the crown here because we have a court uh, in locally and being able to have our police department uh, hold prisoners and then we get a recovery from that and that's something that really dropped because they moved to more online type of uh, court uh, uh, I guess um, sessions so that was another hit for us we also did see we had hoped that there would be more of a recovery in transit revenues and that also didn't come so we're seeing that part of that 2.6 million uh, being used in 2021 to offset um, that that's about $180,000. We also had some additional costs, again, more cleaning, some additional plexiglass. Uh, we also, uh, council was very concerned about what was happening in the non-for-profit sector, in particular in the arts and culture and sports, especially with not being able to be open, uh, not being able to offer, uh, you, you know, the, the type of um, activities, uh, whether they're events at the Capitol, touchstones, uh, or sporting activities, not being able to have the, the kids come and, and do their, their figure skating and other uh, gymnastics type of activities and so council was able actually to pan out about a hundred thousand dollars worth of grants uh, under an application system that we took in to be able to uh, assist those groups to try to get them through 2021 and um, as we'll see here as I flip the page um, in 2022 here we have some additional funding that we're planning to do uh, and uh, CEO Cormat spoke to that we uh -oh. We lost the screen, so I'll just I'll keep talking. Well, there we go. Thank you. Uh, we have our internal uh, business improvement. Where for us, uh, record management is a big thing that we've noticed. We want to digitize, whether it's our do documents at Nelson Hydro or Public Works, or even the drawings and whatever we have in development services. And not only that, but uh, being a city that's 125 years old uh, this year, uh, we're going to celebrate that as well. But that means that we've got records that go back to 125 years ago. And so we need to be able to digitize those. We need to hold on to some of those documents forever. And so this is the way to make sure. Uh, and you know, we've got a big goal this year over the next couple of years, actually, to do that work. And that'll help us not only with the community being able to get documents, but also internally with our workforce being able to access. And we're hoping as well that will be uh, helpful for the environment in, in less paper. That's the hope. Uh, one other thing that we've also council agreed to in 2022 was putting some funding, about $50,000, towards the Nelson Police Department just to deal with staffing. Uh, they've had a real challenge. They are uh, not a... Uh, a organization that can just say oh we didn't have any police they weren't well today and uh, no one can come and work so we always have to have somebody come in and they got hit pretty hard in January with Omicron uh, plus with that with that staffing shortage and that had resulted in them needing to bring in um, staff that uh, you know would usually have their their holidays or have days off even uh, we had to cancel those and we had to bring them in and, and that's one of the stressors that we've had but council recognized that and has provided some funding in this year the other component uh, in the same as in 2021 council really is looking forward to assisting and we're not sure what type of a again package we're going to have for the 
the non-for-profit sector, again, I would assume it's going to be sports again and, and a culture, but we have about $154,000 remaining of the amount that we had uh, set aside in 2021, about 250 is what we had set aside to assist our, our non-for-profits. And so uh, if you're out there listening or you're here, uh, there will be something that we will create and there'll be an application process would be my expectation that we will have people come uh, to the city apply and we'll see how we can help you out to get you back on your feet in this sort of hopefully the end but we understand that it's it's taken taken a lot out of our the richness of our community with our sports and our culture and we want to make sure that we continue to have those here and has is how council wants to try to help So just going to go over a couple of things here, just our financial plan, the process, environment, uh, again, too, some of the quick facts on our overview. Then we're going to talk about our operating costs, funding source, and utilities. So the question may be is, is what are we doing here today? And we put this slide up every year because it's important to understand where the process is at. Council started back in late October, November, in particular with Hydro, going through what was going to happen with their uh, operating and capital plan for 2022 to, uh, to be able to meet the requirement of the BCUC of us having a rate in front of them as of January 1st or for them to make a decision on for January 1st. And uh, so that meant that we needed to have that application in uh, sometime in November. And so that's where we had started at this. It's natural for us to be looking in November, December at our utilities, especially because we usually get the bills out for your water sewer and resource recovery in uh, late January because we have a, a discount date of March 15th. So again, those are things. So we kind of do it in pieces as we go. And then the next one uh, we have to handle is the operating budget and then the capital budget. So. We are doing budget from late October until uh, just even you know a few weeks ago when we're sort of finalizing some of those numbers. And then we come here now, we present to the public, we look for opportunities to get feedback, to answer questions, to get the information out there to our public and have them give feedback to us, which we then provide to council. And then from there, uh, you can see today we're in public consultation. Uh, we will then take any information or questions or what we get from this, this type of... Uh, environment and we will provide it to council and then we will bring forward the bylaws the financial plan bylaws the tax rate bylaws are planning to come to council for may 3rd and then they'll go into adoption uh, shortly thereafter and then we'll have a bit of a break and then we'll be back budgeting again now in trying to create the budget it's really key that we as finance uh, staff get the direction as to what council wants and uh Big thing for them is they, they want to keep the municipal services. Uh, some municipalities uh, contract things out, and um, certainly there is a place for contractors, I think, in all municipalities, but a goal for this council is to, where it really fits for us, is to make sure that we're delivering these services municipally from our own staff. We want to maintain our service levels at the 2021 levels. We want to try to reduce any cost of service delivery, and well we're good we also want to look for uh, opportunities for revenue there's one thing about our municipality is that we work really really hard at being entrepreneurial very few have the parking meter revenue that we have the parkade uh, the youth center um, talk about uh, the campground um, and again those are just even a few of some of the things that we do uh, cognizant council is of uh, of the pressures and then we want to minimize tax levels and tax increases as we go forward Certainly uh, very helpful on the finance side is the council's direction to be long-term focused. And uh, we have been successful in that. And, and again, if uh, I know that people are here tonight, but there's always these budget meetings that we have. And if you look at our capital, including our wastewater and our water systems, we're going in out 20 years and looking at what we expect to happen. And then that really leads to the decisions as to what kind of rate increase that you need to have if you've got major infrastructure improvements coming like we do for example on the uh, sewage treatment plant uh, going to be happening in the next number of years and so again that long-term planning is built so that we're putting money away today so that when we have to deal with that very expensive type of project the hope is is that we've got an inflationary type of increase to your to your rates even though we're investing millions of dollars in a new infrastructure and again uh, key to this council uh, and 
more all of them that I built with is is that sustainability. Where can we do to to uh, deal with climate change? Where do we uh, you know go put into effect places that you know where we can cut GHG and or just you know things like cutting paper. So next thing I'm going to go into sort of our, our all city departments. And, and when I say this, it's important because when we talk all city departments, we are talking about our wastewater system, our water system, our Nelson Hydro, they are utilities, they're funded in, in their own way and separately. And then we will talk about the operating fund because it is funded, yes, in grants and, and different fees, but that's where your taxation comes in. And that's where, you know, it kind of usually hits people too. Not only are there rates, user rates for utilities, but on the conversation of taxations, that's the big driver that uh, funds what's happening in the operating budget. So uh, from our 2021 numbers uh, that are in the process of being audited right now, the old total operational revenues, we're, we're a big organization, $53 million. Uh, operation expenses, about 38. And again, you would say, well, hey, wait a second, that's, there's a difference there. You've got 53 coming in, you got 38 going out. Well, that difference goes into reserves, as we talk, talked about before, preparing us for infrastructure costs that we're going to have in the future. But it also is something that pays down debt, and there's other components to that as well, uh, pay, paying for capital. So one of the things that's important when we talk about the operating fund is understanding how it is funded, because in ours, we've got about $25 million in operational expenses but it's funded by $11.3 million in taxation. So a little bit, little bit more, but almost like a two to one. And so when we talk about that, yes, we can get grants, and we have been successful with grants. They don't usually come for operating, usually to go on the capital side. We do, do, we do get some grants, though. For example, we get a grant from BC Transit to help out with our operations of the transit system. Now, you can ask for more money, but... A lot of the answer is that, you know, we'll give you something inflationary wise. It's not usually large, large increases there. So if you do have a large inflationary increase happening, so as an example, if you've got a 1% increase in inflation because of this two to one ratio and taxation being really the only tool that council has to generate revenue that they've got control over, a 1% increase in the $25 million inflationary budget on, on an one million, a one percent inflationary increase on our twenty-five million dollar budget. You need, as a minimum, two percent plus of taxation just to cover that difference in a year. One percent tax in increase uh, provides about ninety-five thousand dollars of income to the city. Again, one thing that I think is really important is you know the forethought of being able to uh, put a dam on the river and to have Nelson Hydro. We're so fortunate to have that asset and for the, again, that, that thinking into the future and just the dividends that it pays. Right now, it's about $2.9 million in a dividend that the Nelson Hydro provides to the city. And if we didn't have that, our taxes, both residentially and commercially, would need to go up by about 30% to make up that difference. So that really speaks to uh, the benefit of that. Again, uh, we are a, a municipality in Western Canada that uh, generates and distributes electricity. You will find other places in BC, uh, Grand Forks, Penticton, that do distribute, uh, but we're one that has its own dam, so we actually generate our own power as well. Do need to buy from Forest because we don't have enough power at the dam to cover all of our demands, but we cover about 50%. And again, too, we're a big organization, 180 employees, one of the largest employers in the area. So, um, I thought it was important, even though it's sort of sunny now, it's pretty cold north wind right now, so it does remind us a bit of winter, even though we want spring desperately. But I really thought uh, opportunity to, to harken back to January 3rd, and when the city got about a meter of snow in 24 hours, and what impact that had to our budget. Uh, we have a pretty robust budget for snow removal. But this was a once uh, in a you know number of decades type of storm that we had, and I thought it would be important on this graph uh, if you can see it in your slides and online, kind of showing a bit of a pattern maybe, or just how 
snow and uh, the cost of snow removal can fluctuate year to year. You can see from this graph that in 2016, we were significantly under budget, but then in 2017, we had one of the highest years. In fact, we're rejecting that one to even be higher than the costs in 2022. Uh, you'll see that as we went through 2018, 19, and 20, we were in line, some years a little bit over budget. Uh, and then again, here in 2021, uh, we were under budget uh, for snow removal. Now, again, remembering that we're on a calendar year here, so that's a January 1st, so you usually get that first three months of winter, and then there's a break, and then you get the last couple of months of November, December that can affect your snow budget. So as we looked out here, we're already noting that uh, this year we've already spent 740, and our budget would be just slightly more than that, and we know that we're going to have more snow come November, December. But one of the biggest factors for the city when we got that significant snow dump was the inability for our own forces to handle that. We are a very lean organization and so when we don't have our staff working doing snow removal then they can be doing other things. We, we pay the same individual so uh, again there's sort of a, a sunk cost of having that individual and again if they can be doing other things like working on water lines if it's a if it's a a lower year of snow then that benefits the city because really hauling snow yes it's important to make sure the roads are clear we can get around but there's not a lot of value with it because it just melts eventually but in 2021 uh, sorry in 2022 here we uh, spent about hundred and seventy thousand dollars on contractors uh, we had dozers we had trucks we had front-end loaders and that was to try to get us unstuck or unparalyzed from from what that huge dump had had in our quite tight roads in Nelson. And so when we have that additional cost, that's something that's a one-time sort of cost. It's not um, uh, really, yes, there's going to be some overtime because our employees were heroes and were out there working 14, 16 hour days to try to get the snow, uh, you know, get us get us moving. But it was this long-term piece of, of being able to move all of this snow and get it trucked out of our downtowns and out of our, our certain areas where we have bottlenecks. When we have those one-time costs, that's was where we, as finance, came to council and said, hey, you know, we had a under budget year in 2021. Would you uh, allow us to take some of that savings that we had and then we're going to need a little bit more and take it from surplus. So then again, as a one-time event of costs that we would expect here, that takes the pressure off council having to raise taxes because you can see at $200,000, we would be looking for just a 2% tax increase just to deal with the snow removal in 2022. So that's not what we did. We've moved forward. Council has agreed to uh, take some pressure off of our taxation and to pull from reserves. Uh, again, some of that from being savings in 2021 to uh, get us through what was a pretty heavy snow year So in 2022. Uh, again, too, when we talk about all Nelson revenues, this is where you can see that where those numbers are coming in at. Nelson Hydro, uh, again, big contributor, 36%. Taxes, 21. You can see sales of services. And again, those are your, your building permit fees, um, other components that relate to, um, can be your parking tickets if you pay them, those sorts of things. Uh, we got our sewer fees and our, our, and our uh, water fees as well. And again, conditional grants and unconditional grants, uh, which are make up a significant portion of the revenues of the entire operations of the city. Again, on the expense side, not too much of a surprise that uh, when we, as I mentioned earlier, are able to produce about 50% of the power that we need, that means we need to buy 50% of the remaining. And that comes from Fortis, and that's an expensive uh, component of uh, Nelson Hydro. But you can see that in our expense lines that Nelson Hydro's operations are about 36% of the entire pie. Again, general government, and again, that's your finance department, your corporate services, development services. You see protective services, that'll be bylaw, fire, and police. Transportation services, that's your public works department. That's you guys, the, they're dealing with, um, uh, you know, getting your snow removal, doing the signs, uh, street cleaning as they are right now. Again, we've got parks and naturally the transit and utility and sewer operations there as well. Uh, as I spoke earlier, important for the public to know uh, kind of the funding sources. What do you have? And right off the bat, you can kind of see you've got uh, taxation in the middle. It's the one, only the only column that has a check mark for taxes that's in your operating budget. All the rest of them, you, water, sewer, hydro, and waste, they're all coming from user fees. And then also we use debt sometimes and then uh, again, grants. 
So on the budget overview for uh, what's happening in our uh, for 2022 is that we have seen a lot of growth and I think that we've noticed that with certain buildings going up. Now, some of those buildings are different than others. Some will be uh, a non-for-profit or for some of the um, supportive housing. And because of the way that they are treated by the province and by BC assessment, they don't actually produce a significant amount of taxation income. Even though uh, it's a big building with many units in it, that's not something that produces a lot of taxation revenue. Now, if some of these buildings, for example, were for, for profit, then their assessed values would be significantly higher because of their resale values or the fact that they're a producing asset. Uh, then you would have really seen a real increase in the fact that we've had three major builds in uh, in housing in the last little while and um, what we are sensing that in 2022 one of the things that is coming forward is that we have a lot a number of private uh, builds that are planning to go on whether or not that's the uh, the uh, the building that's going up by the old Nelson Deli News building there are condos that are going in there we're seeing building by Kulos down on Lakeside going to be starting there's a number of other um, private that are coming along and as those come along there is the benefit of higher uh, building permit fees which are great but then also ongoing taxation revenue once they are up and running so that's a good part for the future uh, for the uh, city because we are right now uh, helping to balance the budget is the fact that we have significant building permit revenue but you also need that really to turn into ongoing taxation revenue with new construction uh, where council is at uh, this year is a four percent tax increase now when uh, people look at that and uh, need to understand a couple of things when we know that there's sort of a compounding factor that happens with whether it's inflation or collective agreements or uh, uh, other costs that relate to operating a city of this size. And in uh, 2019, we had a 2% uh, tax increase and then COVID happened in 2020 and we had a zero tax increase. 2021, Council again was uh, we were able to fit that in with a 1.75% increase and then as we looked into what was happening for 2022 some of the cost pressures that we were seeing uh, it was it became very clear that a 4% tax increase was was needed and when you kind of combine that in the mandate of this council for the four years they are still in that 2% range annually when you take in those four years. Again, some of the good planning and ongoing infrastructure work that we've been doing has allowed us to have inflationary type increases uh, for water and sewer rates. You can see that um, water and sewer combined is an increase of 1.6 overall. Now, again, that's $17 on your water and sewer utility bills. And I believe it's $7 for uh, sewer and 10 for water. But we'll, we have a slide up here that will confirm that. It's off the top of my head. Now, one of the big things that we did do is that we had an increase in our resource recovery rates up to $100. Now, uh, part of that is that we have a very efficient uh, resource recovery with your garbage and recycling being picked up bi-weekly at the same time. But also the pressure uh, of and the desire for council to break, uh, you know, to lower GHGs. And part of that is uh, composting as part of our waste system is a big key in doing that and not producing methane. But we are looking at how can we do that differently. Uh, the model of driving the truck around down everyone's home once, uh, you know, you know, every week because compost is pretty tough to keep for two weeks. So to have that coming every every week to go to everyone's house, and we know that a lot of uh, our community does already compost, so then are you going to be efficient? But we know that the truck driving through town picking up compost is not, you know, that's a way of doing it, but we think that there's a significant better way of doing it. And we are looking and investing into uh, a product called the, the Food Cycler. And it is a soil, and it sort of dehydrates and breaks down your uh, food waste, whether it's your fruit or your leftovers that have gone bad, and allows it to be a product that we can pick up. It takes the water out of it. Uh, we're looking at a different pilot program for 2022 here when we get off the ground, uh, and we're looking at different ways. We're not sure if it's the best way to go and pick it up at your home uh, every every month or so because we know that it, it uh, doesn't uh, doesn't build up like a, a regular compost because it gets dehydrated and, and doesn't smell. But uh, we're also wondering about, do we have sites for people to drop it off at? Is that a better way of doing that? So we're investigating that. Uh, and again, it's important that uh, we, in um, 
in doing that, that's why we've increased the rates is to be able to fund these units. We believe that it's a, a good thing to do, especially with trying to lower the GHG footprint for the city. And it's innovative. And much like people thought in the day, let's build a hydro dam. There was a lot of, pe of people that were resistant to that. And when we see today, 125 years later, what that means for our community, it's been huge. And again, being on the cutting edge, and, and that may not be for some people, but if we can find a way to really uh, lower GHG and deal with our organics, get them out of our landfill, I think that, that uh, our future uh, residents, families are going to thank us for that. Okay, so operating fund. So again, this is where we sort of have gone globally, where we are, you're talking about your Nelson Hydro and your water utility, your sewer utility, and now we're going to speak just about the operating fund and kind of what that makes up of. Um, big important, and, and you can see here on for 2020 operating budget, you can see the taxes make up about 50%. Oh, thank you. Uh-oh. Yeah, there we go. Uh, sales of services, other revenues, uh, conditional grants and unconditional grants. Uh, this is the pie that we're working with to be able to fund on the next slide. All the operating budget expenses, which again is your general government services, so development services, corporate services, finance. Again, that's being able to go downstairs and, and pay your taxes or phone in for a parking ticket or deal with your hydro connections, all that sort of component. Also, you, this is paying for your police protection, your fire protection. Uh, again, snow removal, sand pickup, your parks. There's a lot that goes on uh, inside the operating budget. And um, you can see that we do a pretty good job of being able to fund that whole package of what you get. Uh, you know, 49% of that is coming on the taxes. Otherwise, we've got Nelson Hydro grants and uh, user fees. Okay, and uh, I'm actually going to take a moment here to uh, have uh, uh, Chris Jury, our deputy CFO, come and speak about taxation and assessment. I know that many of you would have been shocked to open up your assessed value on your property, and it went up an average of 26%. So you know if it was an average, that means that some people went up 50 60%, others not as much. But uh, if you open it up and you said, oh my goodness, my property value has gone up 60%, that means that my tax is going up 60%, and that's just not what happens. So I'm going to pass this over to, to Chris, and he can uh, update us on what's happened here in the last year. Thanks, Colin. It's mostly just to give Colin a bit of a water break here, and I'll... <laughs> I'll uh, chat a little bit about uh, the taxation piece. So, um, yeah, like Colin was mentioning, you know, um, every year in uh, January we get our assessment notices come in the mail, and that's based on your assessed value from the July from the year prior. Um, and so, you know, you see your assessment go up by 26%, or, you know, in this region, some communities saw 30%, 40%, as high as 54% increases in their assessed values. So the alarm bells go off and folks start thinking, wow, what's going to happen to my taxation um, because my assessment went up so high. But that's not the way it works. Really, the assessed values are just a tool for allocating the taxes to individual properties. Um, so you can see uh, sort of on this graph here, if you've had um, sort of a lower than average increase as compared to the other, you know, the average for the, for the city, then you might see a lower than average tax increase or maybe no increase at all. Um, and conversely, if you've had a higher than average increase in your assessed values, then you might see a, a slightly higher than average increase in your, your taxes as well. So that's sort of kind of graphically how that works. Which of these buttons in my hand? Okay, so this um, just gives us a bit of an overview of <laughs> how, how, um, how assessed values have changed over the, uh, the past years here. Um, you can see we were, you know, from 2015, we were sort of on a, a trend where assessed values were going up. We have some impact, of course, from the pandemic that hit here in 2019, 2020. 2021 in particular for our commercial properties saw um, actually a, a decrease in assessments, uh, assessed values in 2021, but they've rebounded quite dramatically here in uh, 2022 so that for 
residential, we're seeing a 25.94, 26% increase in assessed values on average, and our commercial just slightly below that at 23%. Yeah, so this um, is just an overview of uh, the assessments for 2022. Um, we have the 2021 assessed values and the 2022. There's the percent change due to market, which is just, you know, the market based on sales that have happened in your neighborhood, someone across the street's house goes up for sale, and those are all the things that kind of influence um, what BC assessment assesses your property at. Um, then we also have an overall change, which takes into account that non-market change, that um, um, new construction that Colin was speaking about, where you get new buildings come in, and that brings the um, assessments up a little bit higher. Um, and within the classes, too, sometimes you can see changes where something might move from, say, a, a business or residential class into light industry, so they kind of move in between them like that. Uh, and another um, interesting aspect of the taxation is uh, sort of how the different um, tax rates are uh, within the different classes. So there's something called the business class multiple, which is the ratio of the business class tax to the residential tax. So um, in Nelson, we've managed to keep that sort of around that two and a half range as a multiple. So a, a, the business um, class tax rate would be two and a half times what the residential is, which is sort of on the lower end of similar sized municipalities. Um, it just kind of speaks to, I suppose, the um, the desire here to, to keep things affordable, not just for residences, but also keeping in mind um, our, our business owners and things as well, and keeping their taxation at a reasonable level. So, um, Talking about the budget and um, you know where we are with with taxation, uh, you know last year if your average home was that five hundred and four thousand dollar home, this year with that twenty six percent increase, your average home is six hundred and thirty six thousand. Now um, there might not be that many homes out there that perfectly fit that average, but that's on average what we're looking at. So what does that mean for this average home? Um, a property tax increase of 4% uh, that we're talking about today, um, your taxes in 2021 would have been 1,747, your municipal taxes, and they've gone up to 1,815. So a $68 increase or $5.67 a month is, is how that breaks down. We talked about the water and the sewer increases, $7 and $10 respectively there, um, as well as the uh, resource recovery uh, increase as well. So overall, a hundred and ten dollar increase for the year, um, which is just under four percent. I think three point seven percent increase uh, across the board for the the those kind of rates and and fees. Um, so we talked a lot about the residential. There's the commercial side as well. Their assessments went up a very similar amount to the residential, so they're going to see the same type of impact. Um, when you have that 4% increase, they'll see a 4% increase as well. 23% increase in assessed values on the commercial side. So if you're typical, um, we're, we like to use a, a commercial 50 seat restaurant as kind of that typical type business. Um, you know, they would see their property taxes go up $290 for the year. So $24 a month. Um, you know, they would have water and sewer fees as well based on the fixture counts in a, a 50 seat restaurant. So they'd have a $22 and $31 increase in their water and sewer fees. So it's important to keep in mind that the city of Nelson isn't the only um, level of government that has their taxes on your tax notice. We are talking today about the city's budget, but we also uh, collect taxes for the regional district and for the province through the school tax. So they send us their, in the case of the regional district, their requisition on how much they need to collect from um, the city of Nelson, and we add that to our, our tax notice. And the province sends us the tax rates that we also add to our tax notice. Um, so the city of Nelson taxes, 
on a, in 2021, if for every $100, the city of Nelson taxes were $48 of that, so just under half. Um, the rest of it is made up of regional dis or school district at $28, regional district at 20, and there's the regional hospital, BC Assessment Authority, and the Municipal Finance Authority that have a, a piece on there as well. So it's under half of your tax comes from the city of Nelson, so they, they'll have their own budgets and um, mandates for, for tax increases. We're just talking about the city's portion here today, but there'll be other taxes on your tax notices as well to, to kind of keep in mind. A uh, little bit on the regional district um, tax requisition. Here's a bit of a breakdown of uh, what we're seeing uh, on their budget as well. I think Colin probably has a few things that he might want to speak to a little bit more on that. Um, so I'll, I'll keep this up when he comes on. But you can sort of see the, the different services that the city of Nelson belongs to uh, in the regional district and how um, that's changed uh, from 2021 20, to 2022, where we're seeing a bit of the pressures um, in, in those different areas and overall kind of the tax increase that, that we're likely to see here for uh, the regional district requisition. I'll uh, turn it back over to Colin here. Thank you, Chris. Yeah, it's one of those things, I appreciated that. I uh, just wanted to go back on a couple of slides just to speak briefly on a few things. Uh, one is that as um, Chris was speaking about that, that it's quite possible, for example, that even though if we've got an average increase of 26%, you may even have a property here that goes up by 10 or 15% and actually pay less tax. So even though your property has gone up that high because of the allocation, uh, that's a possibility for people. So even though you open it up and you're like, my property's gone up 50%, you actually may get a tax break this year because of what's happened with it being an average of 26 so that's quite fascinating. The other thing that I just wanted to be clear too is that when he showed the graph with uh, such a participant's job in the assessed values of commercial properties, a lot of that related to the fact that uh, they were closed. So you had your hotels, a uh, big effect on them, not being able to be open. So their uh, assessed values are driven off of what type of revenues they get, what kind of rentals that they were getting. So uh, BC assessment a little bit different when you're dealing with a home. They can say, hey, this is a, this type of home in this area. We've sold a few of those. Therefore, we've got sales that allow us to give a, a good value on what's happening with your residential property. But when you're getting commercial properties, a lot of times they're looking at what the net income is or, or what rental rates that a building is receiving that really drives up or drives the price of what a commercial property is. So it's a bit of a different, different, uh, different component there. Um, and, and yeah, so again, just to go back to this, and this is sort of that relationship C, you can see that at 48% of taxation that you get on that bill, it's got the city of Nelson's name on it, uh, but we are collecting on behalf, as Chris said, of all these other entities. And uh, so why we had the idea here for your RDCK services is that that, um, it's important. It's important to know that we support the search and rescue uh, for the uh, you know our region, and there's such a valuable component, and so there's good value that we have uh, in involving those services. Um, you'll also notice that we are uh, you know a big a big participant in waste. And waste has been a real challenge uh, for the regional district, and it's it's a it's a tough portfolio. But you can see that that has increased, and when we look at that over time, that has been a real driver of costs. And this is why, um, for the city of Nelson, it's important to look at how we're doing our composting program because we think that that's part of resource recovery, and how can we do that differently and do it better, and hopefully save money for all. Uh, obviously, another big component of our commitment here is for uh, the rec commission so that's your 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 pool and your rink so obviously we share with that with area parts of area e and area f so again big funding components but you can see that that at you know 4.5 million dollars that we are collecting for these services that we are in partnership with our regional it's not quite but it's about 40-ish, 45% of what we actually collect from the city residents to do police, fire, your snow removal, clean up, your parks. So again, just a, a real pat in the back for our staff here, public work staff, and all the good work that we do in corporate services, development services, and whatnot. The value that you get for your tax dollars and the services we provide uh, very efficiently. So I think it's something that we always want to keep in mind. So we're going to move on to capital. 
And um, again, the city has some pretty ambitious capital plans every year, every year. And um, and part of that is twofold. One that we reach out for grants. Uh, you know, so sometimes when you see the year end, and you'll say, well, hey, you budgeted this much money for a capital program, but you weren't successful. What are you guys doing? A lot of that will be grant funded. So as an example, we applied for a pretty significant grant in 2021 to hopefully get the library, a new library here on our property. We weren't successful in that. But in order to apply for the grant, we need to put that in our financial plan. So we need to show them that we are planning to do this work and how we will fund that. So when we're not successful on that, that can sometimes maybe look differently on our financial statements, but that's the reason that we put them in here. And that's why sometimes you will see projects in here and go, hmm, they're doing all this capital, but you know what's actually happening. Uh, but I do want to speak to this year's capital plan and into some of the future pieces because, um, again, $23 million in an overall capital plan. It's, uh, it's, again, it's ambitious. When you think about where uh, our operating fund is about $25 million. Well, we're If we were successful, we were hoping to spend $23 million in capital this year. Uh, big ones are obviously paving, and we've been successful in the last number of years of, of really, I think, improving our streets and, and, and our corridors and, and working on areas that are uh, prioritized. And, and sometimes that priority might say, well, wait a second, my, my street's looking pretty bad. But we also have to be really cognizant that paving is expensive. So we really look through our assets. So if we have a water line that is undersized going down your street, much like it was on 4th Street, then when we want to prioritize doing that work, it may have had maybe not the worst paving in, as compared to other streets, but you never want to tear up the street, put in the, um, in the pipeline uh, or, the, or the new water line, and then you have to pave that over. Uh, so we try to time that. So whenever we're looking at what is the most prioritized work that we need to do, whether or not that's sort of that underground utilities, uh, obviously when, when a road is, is really alligatored or all split up, those are certainly that comes into play. But we really are cognizant of um, if we're not wanting to pave a street that we know that in a number of years we're going to go back, tear it up to improve the or upgrade the infrastructure there. So that's a, a big thing of our capital plan that we do is to make sure that we're as best as we can making sure that we are getting all of that infrastructure work done at the same time before we put down a layer of asphalt because that layer of asphalt likely is not going to get it replaced for 20 to 30 years. One of the, uh, and CEO Cormac talked about that earlier, is that we have put in, now part of it would not come for years now, but we put in a big application, $9 million to upgrade our storm system. Part of that is because we are recognizing uh, some of the climate change and the storms that we are seeing. And a big component of that will be the redirection or the removal of storm water that is going into our sanitary. Now it takes time to do this. There are big projects, uh, but again, to make sure that the public can have confidence that our, our our engineering staff realize and are working on this, and we're trying to do the best that we can to get those government dollars to come in and fund these projects because that helps the taxpayer, and it also again allows us to be. Um, uh, in planning for being able to do this work because we don't want to have some of the challenges that we're facing with some of the current integration of our system. And we see that and we're working towards it. Building improvements. We are anticipating any moment now that we're going to find out, uh, hopefully here, that we're going to get a grant to start the $10 million deep energy retrofit upgrade of the Civic. Uh, it's an older building. And uh, we are really hoping that we're going to be successful, but that's going to be a project that's going to probably take two to three years planning and probably in the first year. But the goal here, and it's a real hope to, you know, put the new, uh, a new elevator in there, upgrade the HVAC system, uh, again, insulation, try to really, it's a building that we realize that we lose a lot of GHGs from. We're energizing it, heating it, but it's leaking. Um, and also in there, we really want to, you know, put a new, um, space in there that's going to hopefully work with our partners with the Civic Theater and really create uh, an upgraded and fabulous city asset for all of us to be able to benefit from. The other uh, big ones that we want to talk about for capital is the pier. It's another one that is, is high on our list. Uh, we are working through that. 
uh, not unlike what you're hearing on the news, supply chain issues and uh, and inflationary costs are really making it challenging to make it come in where we want, but we are working diligently as staff. And again, there's a real hope and a commitment here that we can have that replaced. It's uh, not looking the best right now. Uh, We know how valuable that waterfront property is, and we really want to make that uh, the capstone of all the work that we've done at Hall Street. So you'll be able to go up from the where the IOD Park is, all the upgrades that we've done, the lighting, the upgrades of the, of the um, again, storm water system that's gone through there. They, again, on some of these rain events, many would have seen the photos of going through front and hall, and maybe you're worried about getting your car buried. Well, we've really seen some improvements on that. Yes, it's rained, and those big culverts that we have are carrying that water down to the lake, and so we're seeing those improvements. Really want to finish that off. We've got the nice washroom down there, get the ladybird, get a really nice uh, wider appear out there and and make that a focal point for for residents to bring their friends and uh, and visitors to come and and, and really have a, a beautiful scene down there so that's a big component uh, CEO Cormac also spoke to the $700,000 that we received for wayfinding, so providing signage in our community. Uh, one of the big things is that we did have the design competition, and we've got a selection uh, to move forward here on getting them welcome to Nelson signs. They're going to get upgraded. Uh, as well as that, we're looking at other places where we can do better at tourists coming to our community and be able to find their way around town. On top of that, other portion of those funding is to deal with Cottonwood and the park, and we really want to get the the washroom down there. Um, some people think that maybe we're dragging our feet. That's absolutely not the case. We've had some setbacks, again, on supply chain and and, and being able to design this. Uh, our goal, again, is to hopefully get that completed in 2022 because uh, we know that's a valuable uh place down there and the farmer's market, and it's we know it's necessary, and we're definitely a staff working on it. Again, we'll talk a bit further there on the uh, uh, because we do a little bit more of a deeper dive on water, sewer, and hydro. But again, uh, we've been doing some great work there, and I'll talk about that when we get to those slides. Funding. We talk about what is a surplus, and and again, when we first started off, we talked about that that we would have uh, we we kind of budget for a surplus, and you might say, well, what does that mean? It's like, well. One of the things that council has done over time is that they've noted that there are going to be needs for capital funding uh, to be able to um, to tackle some of these uh, projects that we want to do. So as part of the taxation, we do have more taxation than we have expenses with that revenue going in to fill in reserves. And so that reserves is like our waterfront reserve when we're trying to do public art downtown. Instead of having to have a tax increase because we want to do a big component, we try to build that up so that when we want to build a washroom, when we want to be able to do some of these things, that we've got money already set aside to be proactive and to assist the improvements to our community. Now, again, it may result from man, you know, from unexpected revenue. Uh, again, at the end of 2020, we were not expecting $2.6 million from the province. Uh, and so w- that's, that's a place when you get $2.6 million and you're allowed to use it against revenue shortfalls, that can kind of go to your bottom line. Uh, so that's, again, one of those places that, where you get that. And again, uh, a lot of times we can have uh, vacant positions where you've got someone that works and then they leave the employment and maybe it takes a while to replace people, whether or not they can move here with their family. So sometimes you've got gaps of two, three months of employees, and that can also create a budget uh, surplus for, for a year. Now the question is, how should we spend them? Now again, you're talking to the accountants here, so we're conservative. We don't really ever want to, or you don't, you don't want to, uh, commit to funding ongoing operations with surplus. Uh, that's just, again, um, very bad financial practice. It will catch up with you. Emergency situations. Uh, again, good tool for non-recurring items. We spoke about that earlier today when I talked about the snow and, the, and, and what happened there. We had a surplus that came from less snow removal in 2021, that's going to go into the surplus. Council, we've had a one-time event here. Let's take that one-time event, take the pressure off taxation, use those funds because we know what the costs are for the current three months and that'll keep things balanced. And, you know, again, based on the slide that I showed, yes, we know that's going to go up and down. Uh, Is it possible next year it's the same? It is, but what we've seen in the trend is that we have been pretty consistent in years past and, uh, this was, an, again, a real one-off, in my opinion. Um, love the skiing, but as far as uh, that going, uh, it's, it's not something that we're likely to see uh, every year. So again, that's, again, one of those things that we would, as finance, come to council and say, here's where a good place that you can use that surplus for. 
And again, just as a reiterating on my last slide here is that uh, reoccurring costs, very bad idea to use surplus because eventually there won't be any surplus. Um, kind of the um, uh, reserves that we do have and that where council does cognitively put money aside each year for. So statutory reserves are set up by bylaw. So again, a couple things on that. As a, when you set them up in a bylaw, they, they explain where the funding is coming from, and it also explains how the funding is to be spent. So you can't just have a statutory reserve, as we have here, for example, for equipment replacement, and then go and use that on uh, hiring an employee inside uh, the, the economic development. You can't do that. That's, you know, that's the, the thing on the statutory. You've got that bylaw. Here's where the funding comes from. Here's how you can spend it. So that's a key piece. And again, some of those are, are listed below. You can see that we we, are, we do pretty well and we try to have an ongoing funding system. We know that we've got like a fire truck coming up. It's a replacement, an expensive vehicle. Uh, it's coming in 2023 or, or maybe the beginning of 2024. We have to you know order that over 18 months ahead of time. But that's where we are putting money into that reserve but then there will be a time when that reserve will drop because we are now using what we've built up to be able to fund uh, and without having a huge tax increase to be able to fund a replacement of, of some of these very important assets. Now, there can be other appropriated surpluses. So that can be a, a time when council, uh, current and past, have said, you know, we want to see a commitment of, of taking some of the funds that we get and setting them aside. Uh, for example, in the recycling reserve, uh, there's been uh, some for uh, a reserve that's being set aside for our buildings. Uh, before, we weren't doing that much, but uh, once we've now kind of looked at what is needed for ongoing upkeep of our buildings, Council now puts between three and four hundred thousand dollars a year into a building reserve uh, to be able to help keep these assets moving. Now that's again a direction from council to be able to do that as far as where the surpluses go. Uh, we also, uh, as a responsibility on the um, uh, the bridges that are out by Nelson Hydro, those are actually the city's responsibility because we've taken those in under our boundary expansion. Again, we do every year put some funds away so that when we get an investigation, they say, hey, you've got some cracking here or you've got some uh, concrete that needs to be replaced. We've got a funding source to be able to, to do some of that upgrades. Again, in, uh, in 2020, again, because our audit's uh, still underway, uh, those reserves were about $5.1 million. Um, one thing I want to talk about is debt. The city uh, does not have a lot of operating debt, and even the operating debt that we do have is sort of third party funded from other sources. Uh, way back when, when Selkirk College was interested in getting Mary Hall upgraded, uh, we assisted them by going through and, and getting the funding for them. They pay the principal and interest payments each year, but that's again, not coming out of taxation. Um, but I will tell you that uh, with a number of these projects that are coming forward, for example, like I said, the $10 million that we're expecting to be able to spend on the Civic, we're going to need to borrow for that. Uh, we are looking at some other projects. Uh, the uh, Nelson Hydro is looking towards a, a, a battery storage so that, again, assist us with being able to take times when we have additional power and if we could put it in a battery source and then be able to use that, that can hopefully cut down on what we would need to purchase from Fortis at times. Again, we expect to be able to borrow on that. Um, storm sewer, we know that we're looking at, I think, I want to say 70 cent dollars. So again, 30% of that uh, storm sewer, close to $9 million project. If we're successful on that, we're going to need to borrow. And again, I don't think that uh, the public, sh our residents should be concerned about borrowing. Um, when you're going to upgrade an asset that's going to last 30, 40, 50 years, being able to borrow now at relatively low cost. Yes, they may have been lower uh, a year or so ago, but still relatively low in the scheme of things. That's an important investment that I think uh, our community is willing to put forward to know that uh, our future payers will help assist upgrading some of our infrastructure. Uh, so we are seeing some major projects and we're gonna, we're gonna need to borrow. And so that's something that we're preparing for. We've talked to council about. Um, and again, when we talk about here that we've got 
uh, 7.7 .7 million in general in utility debt. Uh, of that, uh, 2.3 in the general debt, only 816,000 of dollars of that is supported through general taxation. So again, really low, but we are looking uh, forward here that we're going to need to borrow. Again, you can see the debt payments. Uh, you'll be able to um, notice that in 2026, I believe this is when um, the, the debt will come off for Selkirk College which is, is really something when you think about uh, 1999 uh, that uh, they would have come to council and we would have worked with them and, and we think about how many students have gone through or how many events any of us have gone up there, whether they've gone to scholars or, or just even uh, had a, a, the soccer awards and you see how many people are filled uh, in that space enjoying it. And uh, so again, a real benefit to our community and that's uh, going to get retired there in, in another four years. So we're going to move on to utilities next. And uh, so when we talk about that, it's our, our water utility, our sewer, our wastewater utility, resource recovery, and Nelson Hydro. So the water utility, uh, we have, it's been really fascinating. Uh, the previous councils, well, for my time here, agreed, uh, very difficult decision, but to double what was happening with the rates for water and wastewater. Um, but that was with a goal in mind. They had a plan. They had, had invested in a plan, and we hit the 10-year mark a couple of years ago, and we were able to, uh, again, speak to the fact that we had replaced all of the galvanized that it was city-owned and leaking water significantly. And when we look at what our water usage is at today, it is significantly lower, even though we've had a lot of growth in our community, it is significantly lower than it had been even 10 and 12 years ago. Part of that, it's very difficult to ask other people to do the work on their properties if the city is actually leaking water. So this is a, you know, kind of let's get our house in order and we've done that. And now the second piece that we've been able to do is we have metered all of the institutional and commercial and industrial properties in the city. And we have software and that software uh, flags properties where we see continuous leaks. Um, CAO Cormac spoke about that where we have a fantastic uh, consultant, Aurora Gallagher, and he goes out and he is helping us with that water loss. He's also helping us with our uh, sewage treatment plant uh, and some of the effluent that we're seeing, uh, heavy effluent in our areas and how do we work with our, our, um, our community because we want to make sure that they're successful and not burdened by uh, heavy costs, but we also need to look at what kind of plant we need and if we're able to... Um, I guess, treat on site rather than it get to the plant. Those are the sorts of things that we're looking into. But uh, we are noticed, he was saying that a, uh, a toilet can lose 140 liters an hour if it's just leaking under its flap. Uh, and again, those types of numbers start to get you into cubic, hundred, you know, cubic meters a day of loss just on a toilet. So being able to go around and just you know, work on the flappers, do the leak detection. Uh, some are bigger than that, and we've been able to catch things, and it's been extremely valuable. It's an, an, another key component that the city is putting in place to save water. I mean, it costs us we're treated water, and to just have it, again, going through the system, it then just goes right out to the plant. You've got perfectly treated water that's leaking through your toilet and then going out to the plant to get treated before it's, it's released. So, again, we're really seeing some good success on that level. Again, uh, we, we had a 2% increase. Uh, that's, um, again, a $7 for a resident this year. And again, as we look out, and I talked about uh, some of the upgrades that we're doing, we're still, in 10 years, we're looking at about a 2% increase each year to try to keep up with uh, inflation and, uh, and keep the good work of replacement and renewal that we're doing. Um, again, it's important here. So again, we spoke to... Uh, the fees that we collect, about $3.3 million, uh, cost us about $1.5 million to operate. So when you say that, what is that? Well, that's, again, having the reservoir up at Mountain Station. Uh, we need to chlorinate the water, and, um, and we have a system there for UV treatment as well. And being able to um, have that functioning ongoing, those are some of the costs that relate to that. We have a bit of debt that we service on that, but again, something that we haven't borrowed much on for the water system. It's been uh, successful internally. The big highlights for 2022 is the completion of the secondary source. Again, 100% um, funded, $6 million plus from the province. And we did the first line, which was from South Creek being now brought up into Mountain Station. 
the uh, work that was done in 2021 related to the Anderson Creek and being able to pipe that. And now that's on, we were able to use Sells Creek, we were allowed to use gravity. The Anderson Creek is much lower than Mountain Station. So we have a pump station that will be set up and then that will allow us to uh, take water from Anderson Creek, again, pump it up to Mountain Station. What this does uh, for the city is it allows for, if there was a loss of our five mile, uh, we would be able to supplement our water systems from both Cellus and from Anderson, taking pressure off. It also means that whereas in the past, you may have gotten water from Anderson Creek or from Sellers Creek, and we had did not have the full treatment as you would have at Mountain Station. So again, this was a secondary source piece. We are looking for other sources. Uh, Clearwater uh, um, is another place, and that's out uh, further away, but that's something in the future that we will investigate. The um, uh, other big thing that we're working on is in partnership with um, Mount St. Francis and uh, trying to help them with uh, getting their system up and, and, uh, and, and running. We know that's going to be a big, uh, big property up there, and we're working in ch conjunction with them to make sure that we've got servicing for, for that project as we go forward. So wastewater utility, um, we are waiting, and, and I had hoped actually that by now uh, we would have had the, the you know sort of the the work on the upgrade of the wastewater master plan. Again, reiterating that when council made the decision a number of years ago to be able to make that uh, tough choice to double what was happening for for fees, that they had plans. Um, again, very successful in our water plan, being able to see the the uh, replacements that we've been able to do. And certainly now we're, we're very much on the water side, uh, proactive rather than reactionary. And, and we see that through our community with a lot less uh, breaks. Uh, on the sewage treatment plant uh, is one thing, and we are, that's a big component that's coming up. Uh, we know that, um, that, that the upgrade is necessary for a number of different reasons. It's an old plant, 1970s sort of build, so that's, that's, it's getting up there over 50 so yeah so it's uh you know it's it's done well for us but we do have a, a community that is growing and standards are increasing um so we uh have a vendor that is looking at our master plan for wastewater and that not only includes the stp but other things as far as our our storm collection uh, sorry our wastewater collection and our pipes the the city has been so successful on the cure in place relining. Uh, we haven't done some in the last couple of years, but we have replaced significant kilometers of uh, piping and cured them in place. So again, when we talk about that, it's much like a balloon that you would put between sections of a manhole on your wastewater treatment plant. It kind of uh, gets dropped in one end of the, of the manhole and it, it is brought down to the other end and then they blow it up like a balloon and it creates uh, looks like a half inch uh, fiberglass uh, inside of what can be old clay because our community is old in certain places or through broken pipes and that's really um, helping us make sure that that wastewater is then not going into the ground uh, but is also being taken out to be treated so we've done really well on that and um, and it's something that is really i think we'll we will see and be uh, able to um, understand from our update of that particular plan what a, what, a, what a positive result that is. So I think there's more coming on that. Now, again, um, right now we don't have a lot happening in 2022 because we are sort of waiting on this master plan because we know from that that's going to trigger 2023's discussion, 2023 onwards discussion on what we need to do. What do we get to need to get in place? So currently, um, even with what's planned here, I just think it's important that we're looking at a 1.5% increase in, um, in sewer in 2022. And that's again, $10. And we're also noting that that increase is to stay at that around that 1.5 for the next 10 years, even though as we go over into the overview, we've got revenues of 5.3, operating costs are about 2.1, and again, that means uh, mainly the operating cost is the sewage treatment plant. But that's 
increase in revenues that council did a number of years ago where we sort of flipped what was happening with our water we were we had gotten this big grant we didn't need as much revenue going in for capital for water but we knew that we've got a we've got a challenge coming with the sewage treatment plant so we sort of swapped uh, lowered the water rate increased the sewage the wastewater rate keeping them very inflationary as a net not much difference but that's increasing right now that we're putting about $3 million a year into the reserve because we know that we are going to need our portion. We hope to get grant funding. Um, but uh, that's, that's the, sort of that proactive and long-term focus that this council has had, other councils as well, to be able to do that. Um, again, very little debt right now, 28 k a year for our, our wastewater system. It's not a lot. When I look out... Uh, starting if we're successful here, but starting 2024, 2025, uh, we are budgeting. And again, if you attend our utility meetings uh, again in the fall, which I hope that those of you here will, uh, we're looking at it right now budgeting a um, basically a six year plan starting in 2024, 2025 uh, of about $32 million that uh, we're going to need to do to upgrade the uh, sewage treatment plant. That's what we're budgeting. Again, just want to reiterate, we're waiting on the um, the wastewater uh, master plan to be updated, which I hopefully will be in council in the next few months. So again, for those that would be saying, what's happening? We know that there is a report by, by um, Nelson uh, Starr, and that can be concerning for people. Yes, we're aware that we've got some challenges. Uh, we are trying to maintain them, and we are putting money aside and with the goal here of, uh, of dealing with those problems. Uh, again, I spoke a bit about this earlier, uh, resource recovery. Uh, we're a very efficient system on this bi-weekly pickup of your waste and your recycling. Uh, the big component going forward here is why did your rate increase? The reason why is because uh, we have that additional fee that is budgeted for is going to help us out with a different form of composting than your regular pail that we would pick up every week with your rotting food. Uh, we're doing it differently. And so, uh, yes, I know that that's, um, that's means that we're uh, at an unknown, but we're, we're, our council is willing to take that. We've, we, we have a number of our own uh, counselors that use this product and so it's not an, uh, an unknown from them because they use it and they find it to be quite successful with what's happening and it's it's from that knowledge that they uh, get the confidence that this is something that we think that we can roll out to our whole community it's going to take some time but uh, I think that uh, we we need the buy-in from the community uh, but we also think it's going to be successful and Colin you know it's at a significantly less cost than the curbside wet Right, which was what I was trying to say earlier, is that even at keeping that increase, uh, when you think about how much it costs in other locations in Castlegar and Trail for the collection of their garbage and recycling, it is significantly higher than what we look at uh, for our even our current system. And even adding these additional costs to have this uh, compost, uh, you know, newer style of composting that we're looking at, uh, the cost will be significantly less than if we were to go to a weekly pickup of compost. And another significant component is that that's doing our part for climate change because we're really going to drive down the GHGs. Again, the jewel uh, for the city, Nelson Hydro. Uh, you know, we've done a lot of work. We um, uh, had a tough year last year. We had a number of storms. Uh, that brought down a lot of trees. There was a lot of outages. Uh, our uh, general manager, Scott Spencer, really uh, took the task on vegetation management. Uh, we had uh, also concerns with uh, forest fire this year, very dry. Uh, we put a lot of effort and time into vegetation management. And I think that we've really seen the benefit of that when I consider that we got a meter of snow, um, very little on the outage side, even though we had that much snow going on. Uh, I, we're hoping that as that goes forward, that that is again a key goal for maintaining uh, power. We know that that could be a challenge, especially in the rural areas where we've got lots of trees. And I think some of the, the storms, but also our own vegetation management has helped us in being more reliable. Uh, again, it's a pretty big project, uh, pretty big operation. $20 million, and uh, almost $21 million we're expecting in, in 2022. And then we've got the expense side of that. Uh, we again get the city operations, gets about $2.9 million in a dividend for that. And we also know that uh, we're putting money into the capital reserve uh, for uh, the um, for the ongoing infrastructure upgrades of uh, Nelson Hydro.
Uh, some of the big things that we did, and I don't know how many of you travel, but if you've been out to Balfour, that's a lot better if you want to get on the ferry. Um, a lot of things that went on, whether or not it's uh, the bus can loop through now, so you can take the bus out there if you want to get the ferry, and now you can kind of get dropped off and get the bus and come back. Uh, a lot more space for parking, and that was a big, you know, that was their part, but a big part of doing that work was that the Nelson Hydro had to realign where the, the uh, hydro came in, and um, also there we we're hoping to prepare for and the eventuality of having a the first, I think, a full electric uh, ferry. I know that it's being built right now. It's, it's being, again, it's going to be electric ready, but we know in the future that is something that's going to be key. And uh, we're having that built right here in our own backyard, that ferry. And so that'll be something to watch over the next number of years that uh, we can be, uh, again, first for those types of projects. Uh, one of the other things that, kind of a, a minor one, but uh, on the accounting side, I think pretty key is that we did a major upgrade uh, to the software system. And uh, we have been pleasantly surprised, and I would encourage our those that are watching or tell your friend, is go paperless. You can now get uh, your bill emailed as far as an update. You go on, you can get history, you can you can pay your bill online. And we've seen a significant in, in, you know uptake of that. And we want to thank you for that. Out of our 10,000 customers, we were we didn't expect this, but in six months, we're already at 2,000. So 20% have already decided to do that. And again, that's another thing that uh, uh, helps us. If we're not having to print out six bills for you, paper, put a stamp on it, mail it out to you, because you can have it from the luxury of your own home on your computer, um, again, we want to encourage people to do that. We know that's not for everyone, but those that can, I think that you should. And we are seeing that people are taking advantage of that. And, and again, we think that's a fantastic upgrade for us. Um, capital budget, uh, again here, we a little bit lower than some of the, of the previous years, but again, we've ongoing pole replacements. And um, we also... Uh, because of delay, and this is really a place where we're seeing, uh, and again, no surprise maybe, but a real supply chain issue is getting transmissions, uh, trans transformers. Uh, and you might say, well, you know, what does that even mean? It's like, well, actually, if we have people that want to build a large building or have a place that they want to put power in and there's no transformer uh, available for them, that means that it's hard to do construction. You can get your building going, but I can't connect you with power. Uh, so we're really seeing that we're trying to be ahead of that and ordering even now uh, amounts to make sure that we're kind of beating the curve. So even before where we were saying, let's do our 2022 uh, transformer uh, purchase, let's look at 2022 and 2023. Let's try to get those in place so that we can uh, phase those and, and try to make sure that we're able to provide our customers with good uh, product and good service. Um, a couple of big things too is that we've, uh, you know, our G5, uh, which is the main generator down at our the dam down on the on the Cooney River there and uh, we have a overhaul which again again was set or set back again for supply chain again getting parts getting some of these things on the electric side has been very very difficult so some of those things have been pushed off but again they're on the plan uh, for 2020. Anyway, that okay there you go yep as we speak G5 is being worked on so that's fantastic. Um, another big component that we're working on, and we got a lead time of over a year to get uh, a transformer for their mill sub. Uh, a number of years ago, if you know or you've been involved in, in hydro, you'll know that we did a major upgrade of a very old transformer at the Granite, and it's over on Rosemont, and now we're looking towards upgrading what's happening at mill. Again, we've done some really valuable improvements, and, and again, the goal here, and I think that uh, for those of you that have lived here for quite a while, when you think about what was happening eight, nine, ten years ago, a lot more outages in town and some of these uh, transformers and subs that we put in have really made a big difference on our reliability. One other uh, key component and that uh, was just brought forward to our last council meeting was that we're doing an asset management, uh, a deep dive, a very um, thorough work at the assets and, uh, and where we need to go with them for uh, into the future and so that's we've got a, a grant and we've got 
a project underway to to be able to develop a very strong asset management plan for the Nelson Hydro. Not that they didn't have one, but just as this is you know kind of updating with electronic and and I think there's a lot of uh, detail that's going to go into that. So um, that's the end of my presentation, and I know that we've got a few of you here today, and uh, I don't think we have any tweets coming in, do we? Yeah. No tweets, okay. <laughs> so, uh, so I'm willing. I'm willing to take any questions, uh, but uh, if not, then I thank you for spending some time with us today and, and getting educated on what is a very complex uh, municipality here, the city of Nelson, and something that I hope that uh, our residents and business owners can be proud of, of, uh, of the service that you get from our city staff, and and um, and I think we all love love living here. Yes. Yeah, so we were, uh, our goal was if we could get 10%, uh, you know, even in that first year sort of thing. So to be at 20 now, uh, and, um, you know, I use it. Uh, yes, of course, I'm a city employee, but the interface, I find it to be very effective as well, which I think is always a key in, in getting people to, to join. How easy is it to, uh, to get, you know, maneuver it around and, and download or, or do what you're needing on that. So, yeah, we're very pleased. And again, we, we want to we push that because I think that there's huge value for, for our business and our residents. What would the cost be to mail out to the residents? Yeah, no, I, I, I don't on a, on a you know, on a, detailed level but just even think about the stamp right you know, the, the, you know exactly the stamp right there's a dollar exactly yes are there any plans for further promoting of that opportunity like if you ask me all of a sudden now i'm thinking maybe i'll just go and ask my neighbor right so right is there right Yeah, and, and in, but again, I would say to you, we talk about here, and uh, not just our municipality, uh, but again, any organization, they talk about getting a check ready even, right, is between 20 and $30 it costs me to create that check. The city doesn't write a lot of checks. Basically, everything is electronic funds, transfers, that's how we've set up with our vendors. So I would equate, you know, you would be maybe not that high, uh, so, but you're in that kind of dollar amount to get that bill out to you. And so, exactly, exactly, yeah. Uh, and again, when you think about 10,000 10, bills, and if we're do, doing, not everyone is on six months, but even if you're doing there, um, even just a quick math there, if it's a dollar on the postage, and you're sending out 60,000, you know, 10,000 residents, and we do that, uh, not everyone is the same, because some are getting monthly, and some are getting buy-in, but I say that, the thing about that, $60,000, if we could save that, that that helps, and it helps the environment, too, so, yeah. Yes? Uh, my second question is, I'm, I'm really interested how to um, increase the level of citizen engagement in this process, and I'm wondering if you know, Sarah, I don't know if you can answer this question, how many people, um, can you determine on YouTube how many people watch this? So, so that is information that's available to you. Yes. Yeah, we do. We're not always clear. Like, did you watch a minute, or you know, that sometimes there's there's things. I know that there's some components. Yeah. <laughs> so if you open it up and say, well, there's the meeting, then that counts. It, it can, yes. Well, and, and 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 I know that we can monitor. You know, like that. I think there's sort of levels, right? You can see, like, did they just turn it on for like 15 seconds, and and but I mean, how many watch the whole thing? There is some of those determinations, but yeah, yeah. I think we need to create some fun ways to engage people, like you know. Door Door prize. I've been going to webinars where they've actually been giving door prizes now. Yeah. I just won from Kootenay Mountain, um, huh? Kootenay Rockies Mountain uh, Tourism, yeah. you know, climate change in the tour tourism industry. Yeah. It's very interesting. But, um, I, I just think people really need to be, you, you're providing such valuable information in this that I would love to see. Because when I see an article like we just saw about the treatment plan in the newspaper, the comments are not super favorable, but I, I think it's not a true reflection Agreed. of the depth of work and planning and everything that's going on. So, it, yeah, somehow, yeah. I know it's not exciting from the <laughs> um, But yeah, I'd love to 
yep. need more people engaged in this process so that that information is more generally yeah. the really positive side of the planning and all of the work that council and staff do. Yeah. I totally agree. I think one of the things that's been beneficial too is that even though there is opportunity to stream, uh, someone can watch it later. You can point to that. I know that we've been successful with the media being able to because you know they're they're getting not the easiest jobs to do. And 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 if they have an opportunity to oh hey I can sit watch some of this where I can get some of my information from this and then and build a, a story that gets out. That's very helpful. Uh, the other thing that we try to do is get out. I you know been so grateful that the Chamber of Commerce invites me to kind of speak to some of their groups. So again you get that one on one. You get to explain things there. It can be uh, a group that they're comfortable with and ask some of those tough questions and, and get them some answers. And, and uh, you know, one of the mayor's, mayor's direction in the past, and some of this has, hasn't changed, but I used to go to the Nelson Business Association. I have gone to um, the, uh, the Rotary. Uh, they haven't invited me back. Maybe I wasn't exciting or not, but, but uh, it's, 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 uh, it's exactly so. But you're, but you're right. So sometimes we try to get out to people where they're at. They're, you know, people are busy, and so can, how do we meet them? I mean, we know that a lot of people are just trying to get home, take care of their families, uh, you know, spend time with their loved ones and coming out here to a budget presentation isn't always the, the top of the list. This is my final Okay. <laughs> uh, is there a, do, you, do you, and I haven't looked, so I maybe should look first, but is there sort of an executive summary, like a one page that you could use for the website or to just send out? I know when I did get my hydro bill before, yeah. um, there was information in there. Is there anything like that that could go out to people? You know, is a one page? Yeah. Well, we have in the past tried to have sort of that back page of the paper that has, you know, kind of that summary sort of piece. But as you can see, there's a lot here. And it's really difficult to, you know, to put that into, uh, you know, that, that summary in a sense. So that's why you'll see a lot of times uh, a summary from a department or you'll see Nelson Hydro or what's what happening with capital. So we try to do that as a way of getting it out. And we know that the, the paper is a good uh, medium to, to reach a lot of people. There you go. <laughs> Thank you for coming. Yeah, I, know. I don't know. We don't want to tell anyone. Yourself, yeah. Yes, please have one. Or don't tell, don't tell anyone because that's a benefit. <laughs> Ladies, do you have any other questions? Not here. Oh, okay. All right, you're going to call me? <laughs> okay, let's wrap it up. All right. Anyway, thanks for everyone for coming, and thanks for those of you that would have watched.